But I would like to introduce uh, the first speaker of these two, and that's uh, Professor uh, Zari uh, Segal. He is a DOTA Chair Professor at the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm, Sweden. He is Scientific Director of the Department of Communication at this institute and Director of its Mobile uh, Media and Services Lab. And prior to joining um, Royal Institute of Technology in 2011, he has been full professor in computer science and electronic engineering at the University of Maryland. He also had positions at the University of Oregon and at the Carnegie Mellon uh, University. So I guess he has been traveling a lot. Dr. Segal is also a fellow of the IEEE Computer Society. And he has developed theoretical methods and practical systems for parallel processing, highly dependable systems, networking and wearable information systems. This work led to software that's been licensed to IBM, AT&T, GE and NASA and to applications in parallel processing, NASA missions, air traffic control and telecommunication services. So a very broad range of applications. His current research interests are in human aware, uh, wearable computing and in semantic info light. And I think especially the latter will be also be part of his presentation. So I'm very happy that he's here and I uh, would like to give the floor to him. Thank you so much uh, for having me here. I am always humble uh, in front of uh, an audience which is both uh, pursuing research as well as bringing unbelievable, magical uh, products to the market. And this is in fact one of the, of the challenges which we face in research. Um, that there is a dichotomy between wanting to uh, push the research and keeping this connected with people, keeping this connected with the presence, being in the presence. So I'm working at the Royal Institute of Technology, and in the same time, since the, one of the, uh, the differences between uh, American University and Swedish University is that we don't do only research, uh, education, and innovation, but we are also responsible for creating jobs for people. Uh, I will also be speaking about uh, Celitera, which is an effort to bring the research to you, to people. So, let me see if this is actually working. So, I will tell you a little bit about semantic light, what is cognitive light, how this is coming together into internet of light. But most of my talk will be related to, to something which was very dear to my previous, uh, to the previous uh, distinguished speaker, was trying to solve problems with light. So how do we move beyond illumination? How do you move beyond hue? What is after hue? And perhaps uh, uh, the exploration of, of this question uh, will generate uh, some discussion, but in any way it's generated a company which is trying to solve problems with light. So I'll start first with what is the, uh, the notion of semantic light. Um, it started with my interest in wearable computing uh, and bringing synthetic, building synthetic environment which are representing real humans, humans which are instrumented uh, with sensors and uh, uh, as you know, we are instrumented with sensors for different reasons. And the difference between agnostic light and semantic light is actually that this light knows something about a human, knows something about the context where we are, and knows about the objects which the light is illuminating. So if we have on the table 
uh, a picture. Uh, this piece of paper is illuminated in a particular way to uh, um, reflect a particular human uh, capability of seeing, but also the light or the, the lamp is understanding the picture and might bring related uh, material which is projected on the table. If you move the picture, the light will move with the pictures and so on. So now we have the, 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 the concept that we understand what the light is illuminating. And we understand not only in a static way, but also in a dynamic way. What we do with this, we actually move to what is cognitive light. So the cognitive light is not only understanding the semantics of the scene, the dynamic of the scene, but it's understanding also uh, what is the task and what we actually want to do with that. So if we put those things together, you have a, a, a concept uh, which you will get in, in a second, uh, which is Internet of Light. What is the Internet of Light? Um, we take objects in an environment and we illuminate them with information. And we structure the light around them in order to solve a problem. The picture which you see here is related to the question, well, is this something new? Uh, does it exist or not? And in fact, if you look to the uh, autonomous cars, which are a commodity today, they do exactly what I was describing to you. They understand the objects, they understand the task, they understand the context, and actually they solve a problem. And uh, one of my recent experiences was to rent uh, an XC90, it's a Volvo XC90, uh, in, uh, in Germany. How many people experience a self-driving car? Okay. I wish that all of you will experience, and you will experience very, perhaps very soon, a self-driving car. Uh, I, got it, I got the car uh, by accident. I ordered another car. I uh, started to drive, and suddenly the car began to uh, behave funny. When I was trying to move closer to the, to the middle lane, it was beginning to vibrate. The, the front wheel on the left side began to vibrate, so I thought, well, this car is defective. There's something wrong with this. Well, in fact, the car was trying to keep me on the lane. Uh, after a couple of minutes, I noticed that I see on the display uh, of the car, I see the car in front of me, and it began to ask me how much distance I want from the car in front of me. So I said, okay, I pressed the button, and the car started to follow the car in front of me. Then I figured out that, it, you know, I should try to press some more buttons, and suddenly a steering wheel appeared on the screen and the car steering wheel began to move by itself. I was scared to death. <laughs> but I did 2,200 kilometers with this car and after one hour I loved what the car was doing for me. But anyway, the point is that this is commodity um, the, the, this is a commodity system. This is the XC90 with me uh, taking the hand of the steering wheel, driving. Um, 
this type of uh, AI system is today a commodity. It understands semantic as a semantic engine, a cognitive engine. Of course, our system, the platform which we are using, understands Luminaire and understands uh, connectivity with the, with, the, with the digital world. So if you have something like this, uh, you transform the IoT into IOL, meaning that each object, a regular object, could have intelligence. So what you do with this, since we are speaking about problem solving, uh, I use this example uh, as the simplest example of, uh, of uh, guidance. So this is uh, a map of uh, Stockholm, where I lived. The system knows that I, uh, if I open the map, there you cannot put it back. It will be completely mangled. So it's looking to this and say, OK, if you want to fold it, start here. Then once it's recognizing that I've actually f followed this, uh, it's giving me the second and the third and so on, and the map is folded. So I saw this to IKEA, and they said, wow, we want this for everybody at home for which we are selling uh, this terribly complicated furniture which we need to put it together. And we, we, we all know that we remain with some screws after the uh, putting together the easy to put together IKEA stuff. But a little bit more complicated uh, problem solving. So tea making, you could say, OK, everybody could do a tea. But this is actually the, the in uh, England, is the test for an older person to remain independent in her or his house. So using semantic and cognitive lighting, once I put the T on the table, the system recognizes all the objects and understands that it's, uh, we need to make a T and it's beginning to guide me and uh, telling me what to do exactly. And once I put the water into, uh, I get the temp water temperature and so on, the, uh, the light is going around each of those objects and it's changing to indicate different uh, types of guidance. So once we got the right temperature, we are brewing this for the right amount of time. And we could put the tea in, and then we could decide how warm should be the tea. So we choose that, and we, got, uh, we continue the guidance. And now the tea is ready. So perhaps one more person could remain in her house for a longer time. Now, sorry. Let's try to solve some other problems. And one of the most more interesting problems is how we connect the digital space with the physical space. If you look to your browser, your browser is connecting, you put something, uh, a digital information, and it's giving you digital information. Imagine that you could have, you could extend the browser into digital to physical and physical to digital, and uh, you could connect your digital space to the physical space. In fact, if you look what's happening at Google and Apple and Amazon and so on, this is kind of the next boundary which all of us want to break. So 
imagine that you have your phone. This is everybody has uh, a phone, a smartphone. I could point my phone to an object. The light is connecting me to this object. Once I click into my phone, I get the image of the, uh, of the particular item, I get information, I could buy it, I could uh, uh, do, uh, I could put it on my Facebook and so on. This seems to be like uh, science fiction, but actually this is available in Eindhoven at Philips. Let me see, now I have a little problem with the, with the videos. So, excuse me on that. So basically, she has a physical to digital browser. And this is integrated with the Philips lighting. So she is controlling the light with the, with the phone. She could point. Once she's taking the finger, magic happened. She's getting the information on the right product and so on. So the next thing is, is actually to, to take a scene around us, a 3D scene, so like this room, and being able to have a luminaire, which not only understands what is, what is here, but also is able to form the light around a particular object. So let me show you how this may look. I have some problems with the... Uh... Okay. With those movies. So I have to do something about it, I'm, I'm, my apologies. She's pointing the phone to uh, plain pictures. And actually the, the light understands the picture and it's able to form the light around to the objects. And not only that it's able to form, but 
it's fully connected with your mobile information system. So this is a mannequin. Of course, you could see all the jackets that might be there. So now, of course, we are using here projectors. And let me stop here a little bit. We are now at the point where we use solid state to play with the with spectrum of light, with the intensity, with color. Uh, we, do, we connect this with uh, different home automation systems. If we want to have something like that, we need to think about the next hue. The next hue will be some, uh, a bulb or some kind of a device which is able to do exactly this type of things. Uh, we'll have the intelligence of the self-driving car, the same type of platform we are using. We'll be able to <coughs> structure the light. We'll be able to understand what the, what the light is seeing and we're able to solve a problem. Uh, it's kind of interesting that I was mentioning uh, this morning that one of the most successful Kickstarter today is the beam. It's a bulb which is, have some of the functionality which I was describing and they have raised till now about $20 million. So the reality is that the users, the consumers, are interested to solve problems with light. Now, let me go back to, to my presentation. Hopefully we get it. that this disappeared. Let me close this door. I have to tell you that uh, this worked well for coming here, so. So now, I was telling you that one of our challenges in Sweden is to transform this type of work into real jobs. Um, we cannot do the type of guidance or, or connectivity which I show you in a video in a commercial world, since we don't have the bulb, we don't have the luminar. So as an approximation to this, we said, okay, so we cannot go in the real world, in a 3D world. How about if we go into the video world? So we could take the content of any video screen and do the same type of things which we have done here. So, 
we started a company which is called Celitera, uh, which is all the employees are PhD students, which are PhD students which finish. They have PhD now. They have been my students, so they are actually doing that. And uh, we realized that the two most numerous devices in the world, which are screen and phones, are not really connected. So Clickify then pursue the notion that we could transform any content on the screen into an interactive uh, connection with your phone. So what's happening, if you have an advertising screen which is showing a video, then you could point your, your phone to the screen. The phone is like your autonomous car. And you could, you get a pointer, which is like a piece of light uh, inside this particular screen. You could uh, select and you get in your phone information, you could buy it, you could share it, and so on. So how actually it's working? You go to a URL, which is called clickify.click. It's working with all screens in the world. And You point at the screen. You press a button on the screen. And magically, you get a pointer. And then, once you release the, uh, the, your finger, the information is coming through your phone. And the magic here is that it's working basically with all screens which are supporting something very simple. HTML5. So anything which have a browser, any platform which has a browser, both on the phone and on the screen, it will be supporting this type of thing. And there is no app. Now, working with Google, uh, Google introduced the notion of physical pages. So if you have a phone which has the latest Chrome, the system is supported directly by Chrome. So if you come in a place where those screens are available, your phone will be connecting automatically with those screens. So the Clickify now is becoming something else. It's becoming a connection between physical and digital space. Interestingly enough, let me actually show you this. It's built now in all LG screens in the world. So there are about 8 million screens which are uh, delivered with Clickify. As of yesterday, <laughs> uh, we agreed that uh, Philips um, labeled screens will have the same functionality. And the interesting thing is that it's using the same platform which would be used in, if we have the right luminaire, to work in a 3D, in a, in a room like that, to solve the type of problems which we, uh, I was showing. So basically, I will stop here. And I think that uh, I've been told that I'm out of time, right?